Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study. And we are just excited uh, tonight uh, to be here with you uh, as we begin another uh, Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, the Lord has laid it upon our hearts uh, for this uh, Bible study uh, tonight uh, to look at the book of James. Amen. We are going through trials and uh, tribulation and temptation and uh, uh, different things in our lives. And we need to know uh, what it is that the Bible teaches us about some things that are happening in our lives. So the Lord laid it up on our hearts, uh, this uh, uh, Bible study to start uh, uh, in the uh, book of James for this uh, uh, next uh, few weeks. It's a short book. Uh, amen. And uh, and we're going to try our very best to do it just uh, justly uh, what the Lord has uh, asked us to uh, try to convey, amen, about what the book teaches. And we as believers uh, ought to uh, understand about what the book is saying. Father in heaven, we thank thee now once again uh, for your wisdom and for your love. And we thank thee, O oh God, for the book of Proverbs that you, O oh God, has showered down upon us, that we are studying and reading the chapter every day in it. And we pray to God that it would be a blessing to your people, as well as now the book of James, uh, as we are about to venture in and look at this servant. A man who uh, trusted uh, you in everything that he did. Bless those who are receiving, bless those who are listening, and bless those who are being. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and thank God. In James chapter 1, the very first uh, verse says that James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. Amen. And my brothers, uh, verse 2 says, Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation, knowing this, that the trial in your faith work it patient. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting for nothing. Thus ends the first four uh, verses in the book of James, and already James has said a lot uh, unto the uh, church, and for those of you, uh, us, who are following uh, the Lord and his uh, uh, teaching. Uh, it tells us about uh, a person uh, by the name of James. Amen. James was the half-brother of Jesus. And it tells us about the facts about a person who lived with Jesus day by day and had an opportunity to notice what kind of life that Jesus lived. So this is something other that is very important uh, that I think that we ought to look at a man that uh, lived with Jesus uh, up until the time that he died. And then he believed uh, that he was the Savior, amen, once he rose uh, up from the uh, grave. Notice what it says about uh, 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 James. He, James introduced himself simply as being James. He did not call himself Reverend James, nor did he call himself Bishop James, uh, nor did he call himself Elder James. He simply called himself James. Amen. He was not worried about titles and different things of that nature like uh, some people are so into uh, won't uh, to be called uh, uh, some of everything other than by their first uh, name. So James made a strong statement as he ventured out of the box with his handwriting. He simply said, I'm James, and I am a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that was not an easy statement uh, for James to make because this particular James, who was a half-brother of Jesus, was a leader among God's people. He was a world-renowned leader. Amen. He uh, was pastoring uh, one of the largest churches at that particular time in Jerusalem. So he was well-known wherever he went. But yet, uh, this author says his glory is not in the title of his position, but in the fact that he is a servant of God 
praise God and Jesus Christ. Despite his position, despite being world known at that time, what mattered to him most is the reputation or the relationship that he found in Jesus Christ and in God. Amen. The word servant means a lot of different things. Amen. And James wanted uh, everybody to know that he was a servant of Jesus Christ. Amen. A servant uh, means slave. James was owned by his master in his own mind. In other words, he was totally possessed by the master. Everything that James did once he started believing in Jesus Christ, he took it, amen, to heart. A slave exists for his master, and he had no other reason for existing. He understands who he is and what he is all about. The very thing that James meant by a slave of Jesus Christ, it meant to him that he had the highest and most honored and kingly profession in all the world. He was classified as a believer or as a man of God. One uh, who recognized that it was in him that he lived and have his very being. He had been called, classified as the servant of God. It is the position of honor, the honor that bestows upon uh, him the privilege and responsibility of serving the king of kings and lords of lords. There is no better title for anybody that is part of the church than to be called a servant. A servant is one who serves. Amen. Not one who is served unto, but one who is in a position to help other people. And then once they help other people, they don't go around bragging about it. Amen. They do it because they have been called into servanthood by the master. Moses was a servant of God. Joshua was a servant of God. David was a slave of God. Amen. Jude was a slave of God. The prophets were the slaves of God. Christian believers are said to be the slaves of Jesus Christ. You will find that about Moses in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, verse 5. You can find that out about James being a slave of God. Uh, Joshua being a slave of God in Joshua chapter 24, verse 9. And you can find out about David being a slave of God in 2 Samuel. Uh, 3 and chapter 18. What well, amen. We all know about David. Was well, a man after God's own heart. He was after God's own heart because he understood where his help come from. And he understood that the more he did for God, amen, the better things could become. Even the prophets were the slave of God. Jeremiah 7 and verse 25. And Jesus said to us, uh, who are called, put in leadership position, that we should be a servant of everybody. Jesus said uh, in uh, John chapter 12, verse 26, Jesus said, if any man serve me, first let him follow me. And where I am, there should my servant be. And if any man serve me, him would my Father on. So there is no greater calling in the world today than to be a servant who has been called by God to do his bidding. Amen. Either from the pulpit or from the deacons or from the teachers or from the choir members. Amen. Than to be a servant of the Most High God. And then if you don't have those gifts, Praise God that you are doing in the body, the building of Christ. Jesus said that if you follow him, amen, 
you still can serve him in the right direction. Why is that? Because Jesus said, go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the, name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's our commission that we are supposed to be done, not only the pulpit, not only the deacon board, not only the trustee board, amen, but all those who say that they have been called and saved by God. Now notice now, James understood uh, that he had lived as a brother to Jesus for years, day in and day out, hour by hour, month by month, year by year, James has played, eaten, worked, slept, gone to school with Jesus. So he must know something, amen, that Jesus had instructed him to do, amen, towards being who he later became, amen. The author says here, that James had also probably seen Jesus take over the head of the household when their father, Joseph, had died. And I'm of the firm persuasion uh, that in every family, there is always one person in that family that takes care of the whole family. Just one person. Amen. They serve and do this and they do that. Uh, without any thought, because they love the family. This is the most remarkable and striking evidence that Jesus Christ is exactly whom he claimed to be. Amen. After the Lord's resurrection, James was able to accept the glorious truth that his brother James, Jesus, was the Lord of glory, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, whom God had promised from the beginning of time. And if you read Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through verse 11, you will find out something very striking about this man whom we serve called Jesus Christ. And what he thought uh, he was about to do and how he went about doing uh, the Lord's will. James, 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 not only did not uh, think about himself as being a servant, but he also wanted to serve those believers who was coming out of Judaism, who was coming into Christianity, and he wanted them to understand what it meant by being in Christ. Notice what he said. Uh, amen. To all the 12 tribes which are spread above, James said, Greek. he is writing to a specific group of believers to the believers of the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen. Amen. To let them know that Jesus is king. James loved his people with an unusual love. Amen. And we as believers uh, must try to get those who are lives around us, who are in our families, to believe in Jesus Christ. I know it's not an easy task, but remember where you come from, what you did back in your life, and how long it took for you uh, to get into the church. It took me 30 years from my birth uh, to get into the body of Christ. And when I came, finally came in, amen, I came in running. I had one foot in the church and one foot out the church for 30 long years. And I knew that I had been called to preach. I knew that from a long time ago as a youth. But I had one foot in the world and one foot in the church. But then when I came in, amen, God uh, had something laid out that he wanted me to do. Amen. Amen. So, so, so James was concerned about this scattered uh, uh, Jews that was around the world. And the first thing that James uh, told them, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect way 
that you may be perfect and in free, wanting nothing. In other words, he gave us a good study on endurance. Amen. We have to endure something. Testing, trials, and tribulation. The condition of it is must let trials do their work according to verse 4. And then also in verse 4, the purpose of the trial uh, is to make one perfect, make one complete. If you've never been through anything, then you don't know anything. But if you ever been in something, God brought you out of something, then you can turn around and help somebody, amen, to go through it if you've been there also. Amen. And the way to do it is by endurance. Notice what it says. Let her patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. We all may have or we all will have. I might have changed that. Trials and temptation. Amen. The trials and the temptations of life are to prove us. Amen. That we are ready. That we are trying to do the Lord's will. Trials, temptation, a life are to prove us. They are for a beneficial purpose. They are permitted by God for a good purpose. Amen. What is that purpose? To make us stronger and more pure. As God said, as I said, God does allow temptation and trials for a good and beneficial purpose. That is to prove us, to make us much stronger and much more pure and righteous. God wants us to face the temptation and trials of life and to conquer them. And by conquering them, to become much more like Christ and to make Christ more fully known to the world. When Jesus was tempted, Jesus always had a word. Amen. When trials and temptation came his way, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of, amen, the master's hand. It is to prove us. James said in chapter 5, verse 11, we count them happy, which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job, and I've seen the end of the Lord that the Lord is very pitiful and a tender mercy. Job went through a lot of things, amen, in his lifetime. God did not, amen, cause the temptation to be placed upon Job nor on us, but he did allow it to happen. Job said in Job 23 and 10, but he knoweth the way that I take, talking about God, when he had tried me, talking about God, I shall come forth as gold. Be not dismayed, my brothers and sisters. We are going to have trials and tribulations, but we need to face them uh, in a way that will help us uh, overcome the trials and the temptation that is given to us. How is this possible? How can a believer be joyful when he is facing uh, trials and uh, temptation? Well, we must know something. Know that trials and temptation work it patient. What verse 3 says. We must know what point one stress that trials and temptation are not to defeat and discourage us, but they are given to prove us, to make us much stronger and more pure and righteous. And always remember this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God does not put no more on us than we can bear. With everything that he puts upon us or allowed to come upon us, he always gives us an exit route to get out so that we might not, amen, uh, be uh, discouraged. We must not only know something, but we must do something. We must let patience work within us. Patient means to be steadfast, to preserve, and to endure. We got to go through some things. Amen. Uh, sometime. 
Not all the time, but sometimes we have to go through some things. When we look at trials and temptation as opportunities, then we will begin to face them uh, with joy. And when we begin to preserve, persevere, and conquer them, then we will begin to walk through them in the joy of the Lord. Know this. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, they have no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with the temptation, also make a way to escape, escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. Don't be dismayed. Amen. Uh, when trials and temptation comes upon you, uh, it's nothing new. Amen. It's just happening to you. You just never saw it before. But now that it's upon you, amen, be not, uh, uh, don't worry about it, but go through it and try to keep your eyes steadily on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Look at uh, what uh, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 says, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, and Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. That's the day the devil's job, going to and fro. He even walked into heaven one day and told God, amen, if you take that hedge out and around, Job, I make him cuss you to your face. Amen. God looked at him and said, well, try it. Only don't take his life. You're not authorized to do that. Amen. But whatever you throw it, amen, I believe that Job is able to endure it. And God did not allow, amen, Job to go through too much. Even though it cost him his whole household, every dime he had, amen, Job still held on to his belief that God is still able, and then God blessed him, amen, for you. As I close today, James chapter uh, 1, verse 4, uh, amen. The results of facing trials and temptation can be wonderful. Our most powerful, wonderful things happen when a person uh, conquers the trials and temptation of life. Just like Job did. When a person stand against trials and tribulation and conquer them, he perfects the purpose that God intended. It's bitter, not sweet, but God said that he will always give you a way to get out. Notice what Paul said in Romans chapter 16 and verse 20. And the God of peace should prove that he'll defeat Satan on the, amen, your feet shortly, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The God of peace is always by our side. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 13, 11, finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect, be a good couple, be a one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Yes, trials and temptation do come, but the God that we serve is able, amen, to help us, to bear, to press, to go through and come out on the other side like pure gold. Don't allow the devil to take your joy. Whenever you see opposition coming, amen, don't stand there and try to fight it within your own power, because if you do that, you're going to get whooped. But be in the power of God. Y'all remember that man over in the book of Acts? Uh, when uh, when uh, he saw the devils uh, uh, cast out of this demon, and then uh, the man went over and said, in the name, uh, I cast you out. The devil turned around and looked at him and said, now Peter and all them fellas I know, but who are you? Those demons jumped on him and whooped him 
because he went in his own power and tried to do what he should not have been doing. You got to have a made up mind to follow Jesus Christ. Notice now, the twofold purpose for every believer is to become more and more like Jesus to do a specific task, a job, while on this earth. When we go in our trials and come out of our trials, then we can turn around and help those that need our help. Amen. Don't beat them up now. Amen. Just because they made a mistake. Amen. The young lady, amen, uh, 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 do something other and, 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 and get messed up. Uh, amen. She ain't the first. She won't be the last. Amen. But you got to help those uh, young people. The Bible says uh, uh, older women, help those younger women. Older men, amen, help those younger men. How you help them? You help them by going through with them when they come to you and ask you for your advice. And if they don't accept your advice uh, right now, just wait on the Lord and the Lord will see them through. So I'm excited about this book of James. Amen. The first four verses. Next time we meet, we'll look at chapter 1, verses 5 through verse 12. Amen. And in this pandemic, that we find ourselves in, we need some patience and endurance. Amen. Being uh, 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 in the house uh, all the time, locked up, not going too many places. We need some patience, uh, knowing, amen, that uh, better days are coming. So be strong in the Lord. Amen. When uh, the temptation comes to fight back, remember what Jesus uh, did. Amen. He walked away, looked down, and said, He who without sin let him cast the first stone. Amen. All of us have did something up wrong. So be careful about trying to retaliate when we should be trying to make up. Amen. God bless you, and may the Lord forever keep you as our prayer.